Von Neumann Architecture The Von Neumann Architecture is the earliest and most influential CPU design model proposed in the mid-1940s. It is built around the idea of a single memory space that stores both instructions and data. This means that program code and the values the code operates on are kept in the same memory and accessed through the same data pathways. The system is composed of four key components, the central processing unit, CPU, the memory unit, the input-output system, and the control unit. Inside the CPU, the Arithmetic Logic Unit, ALU, performs mathematical and logical operations, while the control unit fetches instructions from memory, decodes them, and coordinates their execution. A major characteristic of this design is the fetch-decode-execute cycle. The CPU fetches an instruction from memory, decodes what operation it represents, and then executes it. After that, it moves to the next instruction. Because instructions and data share the same bus, only one operation can occur at a time, either fetching an instruction or transferring data. This creates the von Neumann bottleneck. The shared memory bus limits how much data and how many instructions can move between the CPU and memory at once. As CPUs became faster, this bottleneck became a major performance limitation, since the processor often had to wait for instructions or data to arrive from memory. Despite this limitation, the von Neumann model became the foundation for most general-purpose computers, and even modern processors still reflect this structure at a basic level. Harvard Architecture The Harvard Architecture was developed as an alternative to the von Neumann model. Its defining feature is the use of separate memory spaces for instructions and data. This means program code is stored in one memory system, while data is stored in another. Each memory has its own dedicated bus for transfers. Because of this separation, the CPU can fetch an instruction and access data at the same time. This parallelism removes the bottleneck of von Neumann systems, where instruction and data transfers compete on the same bus. Harvard systems are therefore therefore capable of higher throughput, especially in specialized computing tasks. The architecture is common in embedded systems, microcontrollers, and digital signal processors, DSPs, where predictable performance and efficiency are more important than general purpose flexibility. For example, many microcontrollers used in appliances, cars, and industrial machines rely on a Harvard-style design because it allows instructions to be fetched consistently while data operations happen simultaneously. Modern CPUs sometimes use a modified Harvard architecture, where the distinction between instruction and data storage is blurred. For example, a CPU may keep instructions and data in separate caches for speed, but ultimately store both in the same main memory. This allows the processor to take advantage of Harvard-style parallelism in the short term while still being compatible with the unified memory of general-purpose systems. CISC, Complex Instruction Set Computer. CISC stands for Complex Instruction Set Computer. It describes a CPU design design philosophy where the processor is equipped with a large set of instructions, some of which can perform multi-step operations in a single command. For example, a CISC instruction might load data from memory, perform a calculation, and store the result back in memory, all with one instruction. The idea behind CISC was to make programming easier and reduce the number of instructions a program needed. In the early days of computing, memory was expensive and compilers were less advanced. By packing more functionality into each instruction, CISC allowed smaller, more compact programs that ran efficiently on limited hardware. CISC processors rely heavily on microcode, which translates these complex instructions into smaller internal steps that the CPU can execute. This makes the hardware more complicated, but it simplifies software development and helps programs run with fewer lines of code. The most well-known CISC architecture is X86, originally developed by Intel in the late 1970s. X86 became the dominant standard for desktop and laptop computers. It is still in widespread use today, powering most Windows PCs and many servers. Over time, x86 processors have grown extremely sophisticated, with features like instruction pipelining, superscalar execution, and out-of-order processing layered on top of the original CISC foundation. One trade-off of CISC is that the complexity of instructions can slow down execution. Since not all instructions are used equally, the CPU must handle many many cases, making the design more intricate. However, advances in chip manufacturing and caching techniques have kept CISC architectures competitive for decades. RISC, Reduced Instruction Set Computer. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. It takes the opposite approach of CISC by using a small, highly optimized set of instructions. Each instruction is designed to execute in a single clock cycle whenever possible. Instead of performing multi-step operations in one instruction, RISC 
CPUs break tasks into simple operations that can be executed quickly and consistently. The philosophy behind RISC is that simpler instructions executed more rapidly can outperform complex instructions that take multiple cycles. Because of this, RISC processors focus on a few key design principles. Load Store Architecture Only dedicated instructions move data between memory and CPU registers. All other operations work strictly on data already loaded into registers. Uniform Instruction Length Instructions are usually the same size in memory, making it easier to fetch and decode them quickly. Pipeline-friendly design. With simple, predictable instructions, RISC processors can use deep instruction pipelines, executing multiple instructions in different stages at once. RISC gained popularity in the 1980s with designs like MIPS, Spark, and ARM. ARM in particular has become the most widespread RISC architecture, dominating smartphones, tablets, and more recently laptops and servers. Its efficiency and low power consumption make it ideal for battery-powered devices. Over time, the line between RISC and CISC has blurred. Modern X86 processors use internal techniques similar to RISC, breaking down complex CISC instructions into simpler micro-operations. Meanwhile, RISC processors have gained more complex instructions for efficiency. Still, the RISC philosophy of simplicity, speed, and efficiency remains central to modern CPU design. EPIC, Explicitly Parallel Instruction Computing. EPIC, or Explicitly Parallel Instruction Computing, is a CPU design model that evolved from VLIW. Like VLIW, it relies on the compiler to identify instructions that can run in parallel. However, EPIC introduces additional features to address some of VLIW's weaknesses, especially the problem of wasted execution slots when the compiler cannot find enough independent instructions. The core idea is that the compiler marks instructions with hints, called explicit parallelism, that tell the CPU which instructions can safely execute at the same time. The processor then groups these instructions into bundles and runs them in parallel, while still maintaining safeguards against hazards like memory dependencies. Epic also adds advanced features, such as predicated execution. Instead of branching on conditions, many instructions can be executed conditionally, reducing pipeline stalls from branch mispredictions. Speculative loading. The CPU can preload data from memory before it knows if it will be needed, hiding memory latency. Large register files. More registers give compilers greater flexibility in scheduling instructions without relying heavily on memory. The most famous EPIC implementation was Intel Itanium, launched in 2001. It was intended as the future of server and workstation computing, replacing x86 entirely. However, Itanium faced significant challenges. Compilers struggled to generate efficient parallel bundles for general-purpose software. Legacy software compatibility was poor, and x86 processors kept improving faster than expected. Although Itanium and Epic ultimately failed in the mass market, the ideas influenced later CPU designs. Techniques like predication and speculative execution became common in superscalar architectures, showing how even unsuccessful architectures can shape future processor evolution. Superscalar Architecture Superscalar Architecture is a CPU design that allows the processor to execute multiple instructions per clock cycle by using multiple execution units inside the chip. Instead of fetching and running one instruction at a time, a superscalar CPU can fetch several instructions, analyze them, and send them to different units that handle arithmetic, memory access, or logic operations simultaneously. The key challenge is determining which instructions can safely run in parallel. This requires complex hardware mechanisms for instruction scheduling, dependency checking, and hazard detection. If two instructions depend on each other's results, they cannot run at the same time. The CPU must also handle branch instructions, which can disrupt the instruction pipeline if the processor predicts incorrectly which path the program will take. To deal with these challenges, superscalar CPUs use techniques like out-of-order execution. Instructions can be executed as soon as their inputs are ready, rather than strictly in program order. Branch prediction. The CPU guesses which way a branch will go to keep the pipeline full, rolling back if the guess is wrong. Register renaming avoids false dependencies by mapping program variables to different physical registers. Most modern general-purpose processors are superscalar. For example, x86 CPUs from Intel and AMD, as well as ARM-based processors in smartphones, all include multiple execution units that can process several instructions at once. This design has been a major factor in performance 
scaling since the 1990s. The limitation of superscalar scaling is that as instruction level parallelism is exploited further, the benefits diminish. Programs often do not have enough independent instructions in sequence to keep many execution units busy, creating a ceiling on efficiency. This is one reason why the industry later shifted focus toward multi-core and parallel computing. Multi-core and many-core CPUs. A multi-core CPU places multiple independent processing units, called cores, onto a single chip. Each core can execute its own sequence of instructions, allowing several tasks to run in parallel. For example, a quad-core processor can run four threads at once, improving multitasking and speeding up software that is written to take advantage of parallel execution. The motivation for multi-core designs came from the mid-2000s, when increasing clock speeds became impractical due to power consumption and heat. Instead of making one core faster, manufacturers began adding more cores to improve performance through parallelism. This shift marked a major change in CPU development. Many core CPUs extend the idea further, integrating dozens or even hundreds of cores. These are designed for highly parallel workloads like scientific simulations, financial modeling, and artificial intelligence. Many core processors are often found in supercomputers and high-performance computing HPC systems. However, more cores only improve performance if software is designed to use them. Writing parallel programs is much more complex than writing single-threaded code, since tasks must be divided into independent parts that can run without interfering with each other. If the workload cannot be parallelized, extra cores provide little benefit. Modern desktop and server CPUs typically combine multiple cores with other techniques, such as simultaneous multi-threading, SMT, where each core runs more than one thread at once. This maximizes core utilization when some threads are waiting for data. Today's consumer processors often have between 4 and 16 cores, while server and HPC processors can reach 64 cores or more. Many core GPUs with thousands of simpler cores represent another path to massive parallelism for highly specialized workloads. Hybrid architectures. Hybrid CPU architectures combine different types of cores on the same chip, each optimized for different workloads. The most common model is ARM's Big Dot Little design. In this setup, big cores are powerful and optimized for performance, while little cores are smaller, more energy efficient, and handle lighter tasks. The operating system dynamically switches between cores depending on the workload. For example, browsing the web or checking email might run on little cores to save battery, while gaming or video video editing activates the big cores for maximum performance. Apple's M-series processors use a similar approach, pairing performance cores with efficiency cores. Their unified memory system and advanced power management allow macOS to distribute tasks intelligently, giving long battery life while still delivering high performance when needed. This hybrid model has been one of the reasons Apple Silicon chips significantly outperform many traditional x86 laptop CPUs in both performance and energy efficiency. Hybrid architectures are not limited to phones and laptops. Even in servers, chip makers experiment with mixing different types of cores or combining CPUs with specialized accelerators. For example, some processors integrate AI accelerators, GPUs, or DSP units alongside general purpose cores. This allows them to handle diverse workloads more efficiently than a single core type could. The strength of hybrid architectures lies in their flexibility. Instead of designing one core type to do everything, manufacturers assign different tasks to cores best suited for them. This approach improves both performance and energy efficiency, making hybrid CPUs a key trend in modern processor design. The one on screen? Worth a look if you like knowing what most people don't.